Hello and welcome to another CPD talk. My name is Jasmine, I am a senior in blood transfusion and I am the training lead for NKPS. Today we're going to go through the MNS blood grouping system um, known as ISBT system number two, which should be great fun. I also want to introduce you to my new PowerPoint format. It's a book. Enjoy it. It's snazzy. It's not that snazzy, but it's different. Everyone likes different. Change. A great thing. Okay, what we're going to cover today. We're going to go through the basics of the MNNS blood group system. The MNS and little s antigens and antibodies. Other antigens and antibodies of note in this system. And then we're going to go through a summary, which for some reason I haven't put on this slide, but it's fine. So, six of the blood grouping system. The MNS blood group system, or 002, is one of the largest blood grouping systems that has 50 antigens discovered within it as of February 2021. It was discovered in 1927 by Landstein and Levine and is named after the first three antigens within the group. This group is coded for on the 4Q31.21 chromosome and by the genes GYPA and GYPB. As well as GYPA and GYPB, there is a third adjacent gene known as GYPE, which may not encode red blood cell membrane components, but does participate in the gene rearrangements that result in variant alleles. That was, I know, a lot of genetic talk. Basically what it means is, although it doesn't directly code for the different antigens, when it changes, it can cause changes in the antigens coded for by GYPA and GYPB. So these genes result in glycophorin A, and you guessed it, glycophorin B. Um, <laughs> so GPA, codes for the MN and GPB is the SS um, and you can see next to them they're also known as SGP Alpha and SGP Delta. It's been a long time since I've done my Greek alphabet. Might not be Delta, we'll hope it's Delta. Um, so the changes in GYPA and GYPB alleles, apparently I forgot to italicize that, my bad, um, are what generate the different antigens in this system. For example, the MNS alleles with single nucleotide changes in the GYPA generate blood group antigens in the system. So routinely, GYPA star 01, if you're not sure what that means, go and watch the nomenclature talk, which I did a few weeks prior to this. I can't remember dates of when it's released. Um, will encode M or MNS1. And when the nucleotide 71 changes from a G to an A and 72 changes from T to a G, MC will be encoded, which is also known as MNS8. PYPB, however, encodes N and little s. Differences from this reference allele will then result in many other antigens within the system such as HE or MNS6. You can then have other proteins which will act on GYPA and GYPB to result in even more antigens. For example, U will result due to an interaction between GYPB and the protein RHAG. There are also gene rearrangement events such as silencing events which lead to th further antigens. So basically, if you go back to being at A-levels or university, depending on when you last did genetics, and think about all of the different types of genetic changes that you can have, whether they're silences, um, insertion, deletion events, this is how you're ending up with the 50 different antigens that are coded for in the MNS blood grouping system. But the system itself contains polymorphic, low prevalence and high prevalence antigens. Um, these are expressed on renal endothelium and epithelial tissues, as well as, of course, red blood cells. 
and the GPA slash GPB function at, as chaperones for band 3 transport to red blood cell membranes. And a, a major component contributing to the negatively charged red blood cells, glycochylax. I don't know if that's how you say it. So this is going back to my talk on blood grouping systems the cells, where I say that when we're looking at blood grouping antigens, they're part of something bigger um, and they will alter how that red blood cell will interact with the rest of your body. Um, so while this may not make a lot of sense to us, it's not necessarily something we need to be need to know inside out. It's just important to be aware of that when we're talking about antigens on red blood cells, they have other jobs. Finally, there are receptors for complement, bacteria and viruses, and are involved in the Plasmodium falciparium invasion of red blood cells. So this is a lot more relevant to what we do. So I probably wouldn't have known until I looked this up that it's the MNS blood grouping system that's involved in allowing Plasmodium falciparium into red blood cells. Obviously, it's not just going to be this receptor, there'll be a lot of other components because the body is never that simple. Um, but it's very interesting to note how the blood grouping antigens that we're looking at for transfusion reactions will be involved in other diseases. The main antigens of interest in blood transfusion are MNS and little s, as these are the most frequently seen within our populations. As I said before, each population will have different occurrences of phenotypes associated with these antigens. Okay. This is basically the different MNS little s phenotypes um, and the percentage of Caucasian and black population which will hold this phenotype on their red cell antigens. So you can see the two most common expressions of these antigens are for you to be positive for all of them, so M, N, S and little s, or to be positive for all of them with the exception of big S. Um, obviously there are others that are close runners behind, but the rarest that you're seeing is when you've got little s negative, so most people are positive for little s on their red cell antigens. Each of these antigens will be expressed on cord red blood cells and therefore if they cross the placenta can cause HDFN. They are almost all destroyed by enzyme treatment um, and their antibodies can be either IgG or IgM so this will affect their optimum techniques. It's rare for the body to create autoantibodies to any of these antigens. The M antigen is expressed by between 74 and 78% of our population. It is antithetical. Antithetical is used to describe a pair of antigens that are coded by different alleles of the same gene. So that basically means you inherit one from your mum, one from your dad. So in this case, you could inherit M from your mum and N from your dad. This is antithetical to N. Only very, very rarely would it cause transfusion reactions or HDFN. And most examples of anti-M are naturally occurring, so they're IgM antibodies. And anti-M shows dosage and therefore often reacts more strongly with homozygous cells. And anti-M is more common in children than adults, or, or is common in patients with bacterial infections. In fact, M negative pregnant women can produce anti-M whilst carrying an an M negative fetus. So that's what we mean by naturally occurring. It's not due to a sensitizing event. It's something that just happens spontaneously. Moving on to the N antigen. This is expressed by between 72 and 75% of our population. And as I said before, it's antithetical to M. It does not cause transfusion reactions or HDFM. However, on occasion, patients who are N negative, big X negative, little s negative and U negative make an antibody that reacts with N and can be clinically significant. 
Many examples of anti-N are naturally occurring, similar to anti-M. We're then going to move on to the S antigen, which is expressed on fewer people in the population, but still quite a few, so 31 to 55 percent. When I'm using these big brackets, so the others were obviously a lot smaller, so it's sort of like the 74 to 76 or whatever it was. In this case, I'm taking into account different populations and ethnicities, and that's why it's a bit of a broader range. Um, because with the others I combined it, I wanted to continue to do that. Is antithetical to little s? This is the, these are the ones that can have variable reactions to enzyme. So in the lab, we will always say, oh yes, they're destroyed by enzyme. However, it's not always destroyed by enzyme. So that's something to note. And it's something that I don't think that many people are aware of. It's more likely to be Ig G than IgM and can cause some complement binding. Because of this it can cause moderate transfusion reactions and severe HDFM. However, these are both rare. Anti-S can also be naturally occurring, um, however it's more likely to be IgG so not very often. The other thing that's important to note is the S antigen is sensitive to trace amounts of chlorine. So if anyone has analyzers where you have to use bleach or any form of chlorine to clean them, this is why you should have a control that has anti-S within it as the test to prove that you have removed all of the chlorine from your system and therefore will still pick up weak anti-S's on patients. The other thing to be aware of is sera containing anti-S. So sera is the manufactured antibody reagents, um, will frequently contain antibodies to low prevalence antigens. Finally, the little s antigen is expressed by between 89 and 93% of our population. So the majority of people will have this less positive red blood cells. As previously mentioned, it's it's antithetical to big S. It can also have variable reactions to victin and papain. Unlike big S, it will only rarely bind to complement and can cause mild transfusion reactions and severe, that's not how you spell severe, it's a bit HDFN. However, again, this is rare. So we've covered the main antigens that we look at in the lab but as I said before there are 50 antigens in this blood grouping system so I've put them in a table here I'm not going to go through all of these because it would be too much to cover however I'm going to choose a couple to go through in a moment I have also got a visual description of the GPA and GPB which is what the genes code for and you can see on here where each of the antigen receptors are on these molecules so at the top you've got the M and N on GPA and then on GPB you can see S and little s lower down you can then see all the other antigens that are named in this table so you can see that there is U on GPB which is really close to the membrane um, and there's a second N up here in the top of GPB, which has quotation marks around it. Those are the two that we're now going to go through in some more detail. Um, and if you do want any information on the other blood grouping antigens, then as previously mentioned, I have a book which is called the Blood Group Antigens Fact Book, which is in my office, and there's also one at Dartford. Unlike M, N, S and little s, this is a high prevalence antigen, which means that over 99% of the population hold it on their red blood cells. It was named U for the almost universal distribution of the antigen. Unlike the other antigens we've looked at, it is resistant to fictine and papain. Antibodies are always IgG and therefore the optimum temperature is IAT at 37 degrees. It can cause severe hemolytic transfusion reactions and HDFN, so much so that an IUT has been required during a pregnancy where the mother had anti-U. 
uh, just to clarify, IUT is an intrauterine transfusion. U negative R red blood cells are almost always big S neg, little s neg. This is such a strong association that only 16% of big S neg, little s neg individuals actually have U positive red blood cells. The reason that I wanted to cover this antigen is because we have had a couple of patients locally who have an anti U. Um, and therefore, it's important for people to be aware of it. The next one I want to go through is N in quotation marks. So we already covered N. Why are we looking at it again? That's because people want to confuse us. And there's actually two N's within the system. The one that I already covered is the one that you routinely see in the lab laboratory and is find in, found on GPA. This N is found on GPB. It is known as MNS30 and it was named N once it was discovered that the N-terminal amino acid sequence of GPB was the same as GPA carrying the N antigen. The quotation marks are what distinguish the two. It is present on all cells except those deficient in GPB or red blood cells which are HE or MV positive. So HE and MV are other antigens in this blood grouping system and therefore is high prevalence. It is sensitive to enzyme treatment and anti-N does not exist. This is not something that's very relevant to the laboratory. However, I thought it was worth being aware of as there could be more than one antigen with the same name. Naming conventions in the scientific com community are there to confuse us and this is one of them, which is why I thought it'd be nice for us to cover it. So, we've been through the main antigens of MNNS and their antibodies. Um, and we've also gone through some of the other less talked about ones as well. Whilst I'm sure the information about the less often seen antigens in this blood grouping system and it's not going to be quite as much use to you, it's important to still be aware of it. Um, and also it's useful when it comes to case studies if you have some basic information on what's going on. Hopefully this has been interesting for you um, and you've enjoyed the talk. If you do you have any questions then please feel free to contact myself um, and please remember to do reflective learning to make this a robust piece of CPD. Thank you so much for listening and I will see you all later. Bye!